Opas, I'm Jack the Great, and welcome back for another special episode. Today, we're going to do an Easter special. Yes, an Easter special. But where we're from? Cyprus. We're going to do a traditional kleftigo. Now, you might have seen me do a kleftigo before with lamb and potatoes in the pan on the crossroad barbecue. But today, we're going to do chunks of meat, wrap it up individually with foil, plenty of spices and herbs inside, and then place it into the crossroad barbecue. And slow cook it for around two and a half. The actual meat we're going to use. We've got some beautiful meat from Mario's Meats, we've got a shoulder, and we've got a kefalaki. Yes, a lamb's head. That is a delicacy in Cyprus or in Greece. So let me just show you nice and slowly. Here you go. These are just chunks of meat. They're around a hand size and about one and a half inches thick. And then we have the other part of the shoulder and some beautiful chunks of meat. And of course, we have a shank and of course, the lamb kefalaki. Opa, there we go. And what you're going to do with this, you're going to clean it very, very, very well on the outside and on the inside and give it a bit of lemon as well. And what you're going to do is ask your butcher, if he can't do it, you might have to do it yourself, but you've got to cut it in half like this and clean all the inside as well. Then once you have that, you have your brain, you have your tongue, and it's ready to start preparing. So what we'll do is I'll show you how we actually now prepare it. We're not going to use a dish or a pan, we're just going to use foil. And in Cyprus, or in some homes in Australia, you might have an outdoor furno, it's called. An outdoor furno, that's right. Or an oven, where they would, they would, they would heat it up and prepare it. And they'll put the meat in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to adapt. And we're going to use the crossroad barbecue and show how versatile it is to cook a beautiful lamb cleftigo. The first thing we'll do is we'll grab any piece of meat. There we go, just one like that. And I'll put that to the side just so you can see. We're going to grab some duffy, bay leaf, and we're going to put it in as well. One on either side, just like this. We're going to grab some rigani, put it like that, plenty of rigani, like that. There we go. And we're going to grab next our salt, plenty of salt on either side. We also need some pepper as well, just like this. And it's getting a little bit windy this morning. A little bit more pepper on this side. That's it. Excellent. And what we need next, we've got our rigani, but we'll put a little bit more than I noticed we needed. There we go, just like that. And you can see how beautiful it's going to become. And then just grab some garlic, just like this. Put one in on this side and put one on, on the other. Or we'll just put it on top, just like this. And of course, we want some rosemary. Our friends at the local supermarket, we didn't have any in the garden this time. So we'll use that. Just like that on top. A little bit of thyme as well. Just like that. There we go. Keep it as rustic as you want. Don't forget, always a little bit of lavaki to get the flavors and get the juices going. And that should be enough. Remember, lamb is a fatty meat, so you don't need anything else other than that. Then what you do is, is you close it, just like this, and around like that. You always should have two pieces of foil if you're going to cook it this way. Because it is in the oven for two and a half hours. And you don't want any of the juices going anywhere. And then you do it the other way. Just like this. Nice and firm. And that's how you prepare your beautiful lamb cleft. The next one we'll do is this nice chunk of meat here. And this is, comes off the area where you normally get your cutlets off, just on top of the shoulder. Beautiful, look at that. Plenty of salt on this one. This one I'm not gonna, well, no, I'm not gonna put pepper on this one, because this one will be for my wife, because she doesn't like pepper. So we'll make sure we mark it properly. There we go, we'll put a little bit of oregano, just all the way around and we'll get it ready. We did say we're going to put some thyme and some rosemary. There we go, just like this. A couple of cloves of garlic, just inside. And of course our bay leaves. So you can see how easy it is to actually prepare the gleftigol. It's not hard at all. And of course again, oh, can't forget, our olive oil. Oh, bus, just like that. We don't want to put too much because remember it is lamb and it is a fatty fatty product compared to beef or pork and there we have it wrap it up under like that just like a sandwich 
and then do one more. The next one I'll show you is a beautiful gefalaki. Now it's time to show you how to prepare your beautiful lamb gefalaki. Again, I showed you earlier how it's going to be cut and how it's going to be prepared. Now we're going to put our salt. We open it up in the middle, just like this. Put, up. put our salt, plenty of salt. My preference is, is I don't really want pepper. I don't really like pepper on my gefalaki. I want to keep it just nice and salty with plenty of flavour from our oregano. Our garlic, one of those just in the middle. We've got our thyme. On the side here, we've got our bay leaves. We'll put them around there. Here's our thyme. Just a little bit, just like this. And of course, our rosemary. Just like that as well. And now, what we'll do for this part is just close it. Close it up, and we'll do the same thing on the outside. Bit of oregano. Bit of salt. Turn it over and repeat the process. Just like this. There we go. Beautiful, isn't it? Excellent. We'll try to set a garlic on top if we can. Just there. We've got our bay leaves. Need just a nice big piece like this. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Just on top. And of course. A little bit of our thyme as well. So there we have it. A bit of olive oil, just on top as well, like we did with the other pieces. And beautiful. And let's get ready. And again, I said we need multiple layers of foil, especially with this the head as well. And it is a little bit bigger. You just want to be really careful. You want to keep all the juices in, but also keep the heat in as well. So we want to make sure it's really, really sealed very well. So we'll do that just like this underneath. In the crossroad barbecue, we're sitting on around 350 degrees, but we are going to cook it with all four burners on low. And we'll put one more just underneath, a crossways, just like that. And yep, you might be asking, will it cook with all the foil? Absolutely it will. So there we are, we have our three pieces. Our next piece, I'll just do one more, and again, it's so easy to cook like this. Grab your shank, put it in the middle, get some salt, straight on top, put it over, and you can just do shanks if you want. You can go buy yourself five or six shanks, one each for the family, and just cook it up the same exact way. A big onion, a little bit of garlic. That's a nice big one. Put that in too big, I reckon. There we go. Put that little one in there. Again, put some rosemary. Put a little bit of thyme. And again, it doesn't really matter how much you put. And, of course, one bay leaf. Just like that. There we go. So can't forget our olive oil. You can see the mythos beer here on the side. And if you wanted to, you could also splash a little bit of mythos beer as well in your in, in your meal. And there we have our little dog getting excited about our meat today. And what we'll do is, let's do that. We'll open a mythos and we'll swap, put it in just like that. Not too much, that should be it. Fantastic. Okay, Nikki, we're nearly there. And there we have it. Wrap that up as well. And now it's time to put them all on. The final step now, as I said, is to put it in the crossroad barbecue. We're gonna turn all four burners on low. Now that it's sitting at about 300 degrees, so I want the first five minutes to be really hot, intense heat. And then I want it to slow cook. So what we do is, quite simple, just place them in the cross row barbecue, just like this. Anywhere you like, the heat is consistent and constant. Cross the whole entire barbecue, put it in there. I'll come back in around two hours to, to check it, open it up a little bit and let it brown on the top. So overall, two and a half hours, beautiful, super eclectical, cooked on the cross row barbecue. We'll see you soon. With Jack the Greek. Oh, but you're back now with Jack the Greek. It's been around two and a half hours since we've had our beautiful Gleftigor, our lamb pieces in the Crossroad Barbecue. I've just turned off a Crossroad Barbecue about five minutes ago just to let the meat rest a little bit. So have a look, and there it is. Oh, our beautiful 
Galeftigo. All wrapped up in the foil. The challenge is going to be, of course, to take it off while it's hot. So you're just going to be a little bit careful. So what we'll do is, is we'll just bring a couple of the pieces just here, just in front of us. And if you can hear, oh, bass. Beautiful. It's still boiling away. Excellent. And we'll just put a couple of pieces there. We'll leave them in for a minute as we start plating up. Now you can obviously put them in the uh, in a pan just like this and just plate it up. Ooh, it's very hot. It is very hot. And you open it up like this. So you just break it open, come in close and have a look at this steam come off now. Oh bus up, very hot. We just cut it up a little bit, use a knife or use something to open it up. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Look at this. Beautiful. Oh, bus. And the foil sometimes will stick a little bit. You can put some um, non stick paper there and just cut it off like that. And there we have it. Look at that beautiful piece of meat. And look at it just coming off the bone. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Just falls off. Beautiful. And let's have a look at the next piece. And here we go, our second piece. Oh, look at this. Off this beautiful shoulder. Look at this, just coming off the bone. This will just fall off. Look at this. Oh, bus. Look at that. Look how that's just come straight off the bone. Beautiful. Beautiful piece. And now what we'll do is we'll plate them up on the plate. Here we are, the second piece. And we just put this away before we bring the other pieces. And there's the bone again. It's coming straight off the meat. And if you look coming closely, they do this on all the other channels, so I might as well do it as well. Look at that. Beautiful. Straight off. Anyway, we'll put that there now, and we'll put that up the back. Now, the next one I want to show you is, is the lamb head. We'll grab that. No, no, we'll grab the shank. Let's grab the shank. And we'll put the shank here. Here we are. Ooh, it's cooled down a little bit now, so it makes it a little bit easier. And there we have it there, beautiful. Oh, bass, look at that, beautiful. It's just gonna fall apart, look. Look at this, I can't even grab it. Look, look, this, this breaks apart. Unbelievable, do I have some tongs? I'll grab some in a minute. But look at this, oh, beautiful, beautiful. And you can have this any weekend, but now we're celebrating, we're getting closer to, to Easter. Whether it's Easter or Christmas, it doesn't matter. You can cook this at any time, but we're now in the mood of Easter, the Greek Orthodox Easter. And there we go, just like that. And Kalo Pascha to everyone. The Christos Anestis, as they say. And now here's the Gifalaki. So let's have a look and see how that's going. We'll open that up. Opa, opa, look at that. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Beautiful. Look at that. You would not get a better gift I like you than that. Cooked by Jack the Greek. And there we have it. You put it like that. And if you can see inside, there's the brain. Oh, oh. oh. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks to my parents, of course, for teaching me how to cook like this. Beautiful gift I like you. And I probably should have put a bit of non-stick paper underneath. It would have made it a little bit easier. But that's okay. That's for next time. And there we are. So we'll put that just underneath. Ooh, it's very hot, as you can see. Just like this. A beautiful gefalaki. And then the look came out. So we'll put that in back in there. <laughs> just like this. Beautiful. And then we put this aside. And we have one more piece. And that's our beautiful bit of meat there as well. So quickly take that out. Again, it is very hot, so you just gotta be careful when you do this. Opa. And there it is there. We'll grab this beautiful piece. We'll put that just there. We'll make some room just here for that. And here it is here. Beautiful. Opa. There we go. Put this away start preparing and plating up. One more thing we need to do, just quickly wipe that away, put this in and 
we need to cut our lemon. Bust a bit of grass. So we'll cut our lemon into four. Get a bit easier to squeeze. Put a little bit of lemon or bass. Just like that on top of our beautiful cliff to go. There we are. We got it there. We'll put a couple of slices of lemon just around it. A little bit of onion as well, just in there. Beautiful. And of course, some fresh maidano from the garden. Just grab it, plate it around. Beautiful, just like this. There you go. We'll put this away. And of course, without our beautiful mythos, you wouldn't be able to eat such a beautiful meal. All cooked on the Crossway barbecue by Jack the Greek in around two and a half hours. How beautiful. Lamb's head, beautiful shoulder, and of course, our beautiful lamb shank. Enjoy your mythos, everyone, and enjoy your Easter. Galo Pascha.